O R or women their personality I told you before the woman personality Allah has made in a, such a manner their adornment for both men and women so they can show this adornment which is obvious what parts are obvious and what psychological they can show but at the same time they must not uh, show the the emotional or feelings to everybody there is a limitation limitation is described in this side by using the word o r or 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 that means every woman in the world is attached to one person in her life they may live they can show this adornment because they are living with their fathers maybe husband maybe son everybody but they are they can literally have this kind of feeling of emotion and passion to one personality because the word is or either the husband look now or except for their husbands or their fathers or their husband fathers they can't show or they this whole adornment to everybody Other, otherwise they'll again get confusion because they want to adorn the father by the father says look daughter you have to have this kind of dress you should have dress like this you should have this kind of hairs because the father has she has lived her life at the father's house the fa she was adorning the father by by pleasing the is the father but now when she get married she can't have that same attitude towards the husband because husband may is dislikes and liking will be different so once she is attached to the husband she has to look forward to the husband's liking and disliking so she has to adorn the husband now and once she has a son an elderly son the husband goes away then the, the son comes from in front of her first she leaves the father then takes the husband on then she leaves the husband then the sons come so every woman is basically is designed in a manner that she is always attached to one personality and among the children also is one personality among the two or three or four sons is also one son she will always be attached to one individual that is the true hijab of a woman she can't be adorn giving showing adornment to everybody we are talking psychological now we are not doing physical at all she can't adorn psychologically to every woman meaning making a pleasing the father also and the son also and the daughter also and everybody yes they can please to to a limit but in the true sense she will be attached to one that is the word or is being used in the in the ayats to whom she is being living with to whom she is uh, sharing the life with uh, either it be, may be a husband or the father or the son or or whatsoever that she has to that is how her life pivot of life is that she has to adorn one human being in all these categories the one verse that uh, one portion of the verse uh, other than men who uh, or their subordinates she can uh, if she is living with one servant suppose and she can adorn this not sexually or we are talking about uh, she can uh, adorn this servant also other than men who are skillful she cannot adorn the skillful men because they can take the advantage or they can be, be fool them so they cannot because and a servant if you uh, please the servant he, he knows the limits so the allah says they can't adorn only one exception otherwise they can adorn everyone so in this ayah we have come to know this 24 surah number 31 ayah there were four five uh, four, four five uh, hijab one was of the inside they have to lower their personalities from their insides they have to preserve their gaps or private parts and they cannot show their adornments physically and psychologically except what is obvious of it the obvious parts of the body parts we have come to know from the salah parts they are the hands and the face head and the hands to the elbows face to the ankles these are the obvious parts and they should not strike their feet so their hidden zinat is known so hidden zinat is something that can be known if they strike their feet that is the how we come to know what is a hidden zenith of a woman and i am reading the verse below below one first surah al azab 33 and ayah 59 ya ayyuhan nabiyyu 
قل ازواجك وبناتك ونساء المؤمنين يدنين عليهن من جلاب بهن ذلك ادنى ان يعرفنا فلا يؤذين وكان الله غفور رحيم او بروفيت سي تو يور بيرز اور وايفز اند يور دوتر اند ذا وومن اوف ذا بيليورز that they should make a base from their gowns on them this base is made so that they are identified recognized and they will not be hurt or teased and allah is forgiving compassionate <clears throat> now in this ayat allah is addressing to the prophet ya you and nabi the prophet is addressed address and allah say qul li azwajika say to your pairs or, or wives and your daughters and the uh, women of the believers these three categories are mentioned first is the prophet wives second is the daughters of the daughters of the prophet third is the believing women there are three different categories to all of them allah says that they should make a base from their gowns on them by wearing a gown they should make a base this means foundation or you can say like a degree what is a gown in in language in the world in english language or what when we wear a gown in the in, in, if you note whenever you are given a degree by any institution they ask you to wear a gown by then that wearing a gown is an identification that you have uh, attained that degree similarly allah we have already discussed the coverings we have already discussed the exposed parts but wearing a gown is an identification of the believing woman is an identification of the prophet wives is an identification of the prophet's daughters and they can only be identified if their face is open and exposed that this is the wife of the prophet this is the daughter of the prophet and this is the wife, uh, woman of the believer So now in and the gown is an identification it is not a covering I told you before we know the exposed parts we have discussed the hidden parts the hidden parts is also discussed and the exposed part is discussed the gown is an identification that they are believers they should be recognized and they should not be teased and Allah is forgiving and compassionate so now we know, come to know what is a gown it is not a covering clothes women and men you people are wearing clothes that means you are already covering yourselves you are already in hijab meaning you have made, have made this clothes as a barrier between you and me i am wearing clothes this is a barrier between me and you but my some exposed parts and parts are there your exposed parts are there but what is a gown is not a covering it is an identification it is a base a foundation that you are a believing man or believing woman i am surprised the men are still are wearing gowns it was a gown was asked by allah to women to wear a gown men who take degrees who are alim wear gowns the same gown is allah is asking women to and that gown is been asked by allah and allah is giving the order or giving this base to women to wear it so that they are recognized or identified no where in the law says the to, in the quran that men should wear gowns so it is women and remember it is not again i am repeating twice or thrice it is not a covering it is an identification a gown is an identification that they are prophet wives they are not ordinary wives they are prophet's daughters they are not ordinary wo uh, women they are the women of the believers and they are recognized and gown is a recognition they are in arabic zalika adna an yu'rafna that is the base is to be that identified or recognized it is made so that they are identified or recognized and they will not be hurt or teased and allah is forgiving and compassionate so remember ladies and gentlemen we have understood the exposed part the private parts and now the gown has introduced and gown is an identification so that they are recognized as believing women
سور العذاب 33 ان ایت 33 وقرن فی بیوتکن ولا تبرجن تبرج تبرج الجاهلیه جاهلیت الاولى واقمنا الصلاه واتينا الزكاه واطعنا الله ورسوله انما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم الرجس اهل البيت ويطهركم تطهيرا and keep a link in your houses and you do not decorate yourselves as you decorate previously in ignorance jahiliyat ul ignorance and establish the salah the prayer and give zakat the justif- justification and obey allah and his messenger surely allah wants to take away the dirt from you people of the house and to purify you as purified ones in this ayah allah is referring to the wives of the prophets or the pairs of the prophet the context of this ayah it says keep a link in your houses and you do not decorate yourselves as you decorated previously in, 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 in ignorance now we see in the world and we have so many beauty parlors women are being decorated what is the reason for decoration they adorn themselves what why they adorn themselves because allah has made their psyche they are psychologically in a manner they are born like this they want to be look nice they want to please they want to be adorned that's that's the psychology but they forget this they are already an adornment they are already an adornment by men for men and both we have read that ayat that allah has made for men and women both women as an adornment if you see a piece of gold it's an adornment if you uh, make the gold in any manner vegetable gold you will be attracted towards gold won't you or you see a marked horse which is i'm talking about the adorn if you see a sun you don't have to adorn the sun to be good you will be more adorned Similarly, women are adornment. Gold is gold. You like gold. You make shape the gold into anything, make a ring out of it or make anything, but it will remain an adornment. Similarly, women are adornment. It will remain adornment. So women, when decorating themselves, forget that they are being adornment. So they think psychologically they are not so good. They are not being adorned. So they think that if they adorn further, which this whole system has been made, maybe maybe it's better but they forget they are already adornment they may be looking pleasing to someone why are you making more pleasing to yourself or for, for to others because allah says these are the, the they are the they are the people allah has mentioned that you have to adorn these personalities one of the, these personality you can your psyche is built in in a manner you do not want to adorn every tom dick and harry no woman wants this they want to be they want to please one personality it's the, in their psychology so if they want if they are adorning themselves they are making confusion for other other men and women both so if it has become a fashion so that is why allah says we are talking about the is the content of this eye is referring to the prophet's wives that keep a link in your houses and you do not decorate yourselves as you decorated previously in ignorance you may have done it in before in ignorance but now you do not decorate number one and then also keep a link in your houses meaning a woman ha- should have a link in the house they are asking why we should remain in the house all the time you don't have to remain in the house you should decorate the house you may look after the house all the internal house affairs you must know it you are made like such we why allah is telling you something we, you already know it from the very childhood I have got daughters I have got sons I was a son myself when I was young I never played houses children playing with dolls and this in and this uh, houses little houses that you buy and bring for you my daughters still play today small little daughters they are playing why they are playing who is teaching them to play with dolls and this houses barbie doll and this houses and why because you built in your personality so allah is asking to have a link in the house is natural is but natural you like to have a house you like to work in the house you look after house it is your psychology built in by force you don't have to go out 
So now if, uh, in this ayah, Allah says, uh, establish the salah prayer and give zakah justification and obey Allah and his messenger. Surely Allah wants to take away the dirt from you people. It's in plural now of the house and to purify you as purified ones. The, the most important part or aspect of, the, of this verse related to our talk, the topic is that you have, the women should have a link in the house. They should keep a link in your houses and, you, and they should not decorate as they have decorated in, in ignorance. But in, I just want to refer to an ayah uh, in the Quran, Surah An-Nisa 4 and Ayah 15. I read for you and then I will explain what is the point I'm making here. Wallati yatin al fahishata min nisaikum, fasta shidu alayhinna arbaatam minkum, fa in shahidu fa amsikuhunna fil buyut, hatta yatawafahunna al maut. And those, and those from your women who comes with obscenity, then take four witnesses amongst you on them. Then if they bear witness, so detain them in the houses until death is complete on them. Or Allah will set a, set a way for them. I am referring this ayat not in hijab context. The context of this ayat is referring, why I refer this is referring to you, is previously I read an ayah that was said that the woman should have a link in the house. Now link does not mean that you have to detain the woman in the house. Detaining means you do not let your wives go or women go out of the house is not mentioned in the Quran. Because detain only you can detain your woman in the house is only if they have done some obscenity. Going out is not restricted for women. That is why I am referring to this ayah. They can remain in the house, have a link in the house, they can go out, they can do whatever shopping or whatsoever, but they must have a link in the house, their mind should be in the house, mostly because they have to build house, physical house and psychological house. Now, if, if some people detain the woman in the house, is only allowed if you find that your woman is, have committed some fahisha. So if you come to know that your wife has committed a faisha, then you detained her. And not that you look for four witnesses, eyewitnesses. You come to know by yourself. If you come to know by yourself that your wife has committed adultery or fornication, what you have to do? You can detain her in the house. You don't have to kill her. You don't have to for, uh, make hundred stripes of what? Hundred stripes. You detain her in the house. You don't have to divorce her. What you have to do is, you take four witnesses. Four witnesses of detaining her. Like when I'm getting married, I, 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 I'm getting married, I take witnesses. Two from the men and two from the women. Don't you? So are they looking what you are going to do? No. <laughs> they take a witness that I'm getting married on a piece of paper. Similarly, you take, detaining the woman in your house, you must have four witnesses. Look, I, she has committed adultery and fraud. I am convinced and she's, she's committed, she has, we have come to know. Now, I am detaining my wife. So, to detain the wife in the house, you must have four witnesses. So, that, that is the reason to detain. So, I was just referring to you, is the woman can have a link in the house. That doesn't mean that she can't go out and work. We are talking about that if she has committed adultery or fraud and she's a wife of somebody, then she should be detained in the house. That is why I was referring to this. Anyway, now if you go to page number 11 and 12, Surah number Azab 33, Ayat 32. Nisa O woman of the Prophet, you should never be like any one of the women. If you take guard, then do not subjugate with the saying, so the one who has sickness in his heart will have desire. And you should speak a saying of recognition. Maruf. Now, Allah says again to the women of the Prophet, that they are not like any other woman. All these ayat that I'm reading is believing women or the women of the Prophet. They are not ordinary women. So Allah is also saying, you are not like any other woman, any ordinary woman, any other woman. If you take taqwa or you take taqwa, you do have taqwa, then do not subjugate with the saying, so the one who have, has a, 
has a sickness in his heart will have the desire. Now you must understand what is this? Whenever a man speaks to woman and the woman speaks to man, we can have conversation behind a veil. Meaning behind we have to have a hirail in hijab we can speak to each other. But we must not forget that if the woman should not speak or if the, they should not be subjugated to any ex-personality or generally, so that a man who is having a sickness, a sickness in his heart will be moved with desire thinking that she is interested in me. She just, you know, she just in her normal way she's talking. Because she's an adornment, she's talking normally. And every woman knows that. She doesn't mean so many words, the man thinks that she means it. Because she's an adornment, so Allah is asking this woman, she, Allah knows that this women are adornment for both sexes, men and women, women both. But the man who has got a sickness in his heart will be moved with desire. That is why Allah says, do not be subjugated with the saying, so the one who has sickness in his heart will have desire. And you should speak a saying of recognition, meaning without feelings of passion and emotion. They should speak straight. Have straight dialogue, straight discussion, not from the heart, not with feelings. So this is again in a hijab or a veil of a woman, even in speaking. They should speak in a manner that that veil should be kept. And that veil is not like adorning or subjugating themselves. Say this and that, you know, like this. What they do in the shopping. Or well, many, many times they know how to uh, play. Uh, they don't mean, of course they don't mean, we all know that. But what happens, the, uh, this is the wrong attitude of women towards, towards men. Because they are adornment, they should not take the advantage. That is why Allah is saying, do not subjugate yourself. Now, this, up till now, I have read the verses related to women and their hijab. And all these ayahs, the word hijab, the veil was not present. You may have noted this. But we have deduced from the reading of ayahs that what is the hijab of, or the veil of a woman. Now I would like to have a comparative view with few verses where according to the Bible, the Jews and the Christians faith, where, where the, the, the veil is also mentioned in the Christian Bible. Then uh, we will read what the Quran says about the hijab or the veil of men. But first we read what is the hijab veil of a woman in the Bible. Page number 15 and 16. According to Good News Bible, Jews and Christians faith, 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 5. And any woman who prays or proclaims God's message in public, worship with nothing on her head, this graces her husband. There, there is no difference between her and a woman whose head has been shaved. You look here very carefully, the headgear comes. The headgear. Any woman, this is a biblical law for the Christian and the Jews. And then you will look the nuns. Nuns and the sisters in the Christian world wears a headgear. Wears a headgear. And no, no country or no country will say any word to that nun or sister who is wearing a headgear because she's a nun. It says because they can show in the Bible, any woman who prays or proclaims God in public worship with nothing on her head disgraces her husband. There is no difference between her and woman whose head has been shaved. So the sister nuns and nuns also get shaved also. You know this or I don't know you know this or not. On 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 10, on account of the angels, then a woman should have a covering of, over her head to show that she is under the husband's authority. I am reading the Bible and this is biblical law that the woman should cover her head to show that she is under her husband, show the husband's authority. This is Bible. So any woman who is covering her head is according to Christian, they are, they are following. So the nuns and the sister nuns, you know, go and see the all over the world, the Christian nuns and this Mother Tisa and everywhere and the nuns are wearing this headgear. Further in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 6, if the woman does not cover her head, 
she might as well cut her hair. And since it is shameful thing for a woman to shave her head or cut her hair, she should cover her head. If she feels shameful, then she should cover her head. First of all, she does not, if the woman does not cover her head, she might as well cut her hair. And since it is shameful, then for a woman to shave her head or cut her hair, she should cover her head. If the woman feels shameful when she has shaved her head and feels shameful, she should cover her head. And further, 1 Corinthians 11 verse 15, but for a woman, it is a thing of beauty. Her long hair has been given to her to serve as a covering. You know this long hair business? Women should have long hairs. Where did you get the idea? Bible says, women should have long hairs, big, big, long And they think, mine one is more bigger than yours. And this line, silky hairs, big, big, long hairs. Allah says, but, Allah astaghfirullah, Allah says, Bible says, but for a woman, it is a thing of beauty, her long hair, and has been given to her to serve as a covering. They can cover themselves by big, big hairs. You understand this? So this is a comparison that headgear is a biblical or a Christian or a Jew uh, belief. And it is practiced by the nuns and the Jewish uh, uh, religious women. Now, now I will read these few ayahs related to husbands, uh, husbands, sorry, men, men, hijab, the veil. So because they are not excluded, because this all we are discussing is only for the purpose, if we will have this hijab or the veil, the purpose is that Allah will speak to us. That is why we are having that, we have to follow these rules and regulations of Allah's ayahs, that we should have this hijab veil so that Allah should communicate to us. And it's, now I'm reading those ayahs or verses related to men. Surah An Nur 24, Ayah 30. Say for the believers that they should lower themselves from their insides and they, that they preserve their gaps, private parts. That is more justified for them. Surely Allah is well acquainted with, with what they invent. So if you look in the, in the, in the women also verse I read in 24, 30, 30, uh, 31, the believer women should also lower the, themselves from the inside. Same with the men, that the men should lower their gaze, lower, not the, lower their, uh, themselves from their insides. Whatever the insight Allah has given to men, they should lower themselves. And they should preserve their g gaps or private parts. So same, same, no difference. And it is not with the eyes. Again, the word is not eyes. Men and women say that you have to look downwards and talk like this. How are you and this? I was not like this. You look into their eyes, but your inside should lower your, your satanic feelings, lower yourselves. You can talk to them, but you should lower your gaze, uh, lower yourselves uh, by the inside. And also pres preserve your private parts, same. And that is more justified for them. So Allah is well acquainted with what they invent. So it is almost the same. We don't have to clarify. You go further. Surah Azab 33 and Ayah 53. Ya ayu al-ladheena amanu la tadkhulu buyuta al-nabiyyi illa an yu'dhana lakum ila ta'am ghayra nazirina inah walakin idha du'itum fadkhulu faidha ta'imtum fantashiru wala musta'nisina li hadith inna dhalikum kana yu'dhi al-nabiyya fayastahyi minkum وَاللَّهُ لَا يَسْتَحْيِي مِنَ الْحَقِّ وَإِذَا سَأَلْتُمُهُنَّ مَتَعًا فَاسْأَلُوهُنَّ مِنْ وَرَاءِ حِجَابٍ ذَلِكُمْ أَطْهَرُ لِقُلُوبِكُمْ وَقُلُوبِهِنَّ وَمَا كَانَ لَكُمْ أَنْ تُؤْذُوا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَلَا أَنْ تَنْكِحُوا أَزْوَاجَهُ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ أَبَدًا إِنَّ ذَلِكُمْ كَانَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَظِيمًا O oh, you believe you do not enter the houses of the Prophet except permission for a meal is given to you other than waiting for his preparation but when you are invited, then enter. And when you have had the, had the meal, then disperse. And do not socialize or familiarize for any event or hadith narration. Surely that is hurtful to the Prophet. And so he is ashamed from you. 
and Allah is not ashamed from the truth and when you ask them from for any commodity so ask them from behind a hijab veil that is purer for your hearts and for their hearts and it is not for you to hurt the messenger of Allah and and after him you ever marry his wives surely that would be a big offense in the nearness of Allah now in this verse this is a, a, a verse educating us how we men and women should socialize or familiarize or or mingle in each other the reference is given with the prophet but this is an education for us also it says oh you who believe always refer remember this is all for believers not for ordinary men and women it's for believers oh you who believe do not enter the house of the prophet except permission for a meal is given to you other than waiting for his preparation but when when you are invited then enter and when you have had the meal then disperse meaning if we are if i am you are invite me or i invite you whenever we invite each other we must go at an almost the right time had the meal when invited for okay, now have this meal and when you have this meal then don't familiarize or socialize just eat and go